Hmm. Hi guys, I'm Dean and welcome back to another edition of The Inebriologist. So, this week, yeah, I kind of had a, um, a request to um, review this beer. Bit of a bizarre request, I think, you know, considering, you know, most of the beers that I do are quite sort of uh, craft orientated or, you know, they're from independent breweries, that sort of thing, microbreweries. But yeah, I've got a friend uh, back home who's just nagging me to... Um, to review this beer so uh, you know I'm not naming names on uh, who it is uh, Daniel Bowen but yeah um, he's asked me to do a constructive uh, review to be honest I, d I don't know if it's um, if it's one of his favorite beers or anything like that you know but I think um, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt I think you know um, so yeah um, this week uh, I'm gonna be reviewing uh, Carlin a can of Carlin. You can take this as sort of satire or anything like that if you wanted to. You could, you could take it as a as a joke review. Yeah, I'll try my best to do some form of um, like a review uh, or so, you know some form of uh, analysis or summary on what the beer actually tastes like. So I know for a fact that I, I'm not really going to be liking this. I've, I've said in previous videos and stuff that. I'm not really a massive fan of lager. You know, I do like the craft beers that do make lagers because they seem to be a lot more flavoursome and stuff. This is mass-produced stuff. Uh, mass-produced crap, let's be honest. Uh, so I'm probably not going to like it. You know, but at the end of the day, this is all for science and stuff. So, uh, yeah. So as I said, this is a can of Carlin. Straight up, normal, standard Carlin. I can't believe I paid money for this. See, the camera won't even zoom in to the Carlin label. There we go. Original lager. I don't know how original it is. This is going to be terrible. Yeah, it's a 440ml can, uh, and it comes in at 4% EVV. So nice and sessionable. You know, it's, well, I say sessionable, but I won't be drinking more than one of them, let's be honest. So, cracked it open. Um, yeah, so, uh, uh, panicky. I'm gonna just pour it and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, standard pint glass, because that's what it's all about, isn't it? Uh, pub pint glass. So, here, here we go. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Mmm. Yeah, I think I poured it just a tad too vigorously, I think. However, the, the head seems to be going down a bit now. So that's like a, a five to six finger head. Creepy head to it, I suppose. The colour on it, straw, sort of like yellow colour. Oh, it's just so strange to be sort of analysing a, a beer which I probably haven't touched since I was about 18 years old. Yeah, 18, that's it, yeah. I'm not going to say what I drank before I was 18. That's a different story altogether. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's, it was the type of beers I think when I drank when I was quite young. And it was just, yeah, it was more to do with drinking in quantity rather than quality or any form of or any sliver of uh, flavor in it basically oh, just trying to get this head down on it so i can have a proper smell of it anyway yeah so the head the head's gone down a little bit of it so as i said you know the the color's quite sort of like straw pale oh dear me yeah time to as, as i said there's, there's not much really to that color there is a bit of carbonation in there if you can see Let's have a look. If you can see, well, you can see my hand through the glass anyway. No. No, you can't see that. But yeah, I can see there's there's some sort of like bubbles and stuff going up there. You know, it's, uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a bit carbonated, should we say. You know, it's not massively carbonated, but yeah, so I think I've looked at it enough. I think I just want to just have a smell and see what's happening in there, you know. So here we go. To be fair, it doesn't smell as bad as what I thought it was going to be. I can smell like sort of, obviously the malt is malt heavy, uh, sort of biscuity type of malt to it. Very metallic smelling, um, you know, I'm guessing. It's not only because it's been, it's been in the, the can or whatever, you know, but it's, it's just that, it's the process and how it's made. It's just completely, it's a completely mechanized way of making beer. Um, so it's just, there's, there's no love at all gone into this to make the beer uh, so that's why it just smells quite artificial uh, oh sorry it's 
chucking it down, sorry. See, this is the first time it, in ages been chucking it down while I'm on, on the camera. Uh, obviously, it's because I've cracked open a, a can of Carlin. Clouds are not happy with me for drinking this, or about to drink this. As I said, it's it's completely mechanised way of making beer. Uh, you know, this is, um, I think it's Molson Coors is the company that make it. Yeah, Molson Coors, brilliant company. So uh, they, you know, they're based in America that make uh, Coors, Coors beers and that, that sort of thing. Actually, funny enough, there's a Molson Coors, uh, I think it's their marketing or it's their contact centre, which is based up the road actually from where I live so it's not that far it's like a quarter of an hour drive to the to the main to one of the main head offices there you know but again Molson Coors is it's just a big factory where they'll they'll just make all these mass-produced beers uh, so no love and appreciation gone into um, to making the beer you know so so without further ado time to dive into a beer that I haven't had since I was late teens just going to flood back all those memories of uh, going out on the town in Swansea and um, yeah, places like that. So, oh God. So, cheers. Jesus, really is chucking it down. Yeah, so on the taste, it's, um, I think, to be honest, the only thing I can kind of compare this to is is um well to me this just tastes like a shandy you know so a shandy which is just lager and lemonade combined to make a shandy it just kind of tastes like that to me because i think the majority of beers that i do tend to drink are about you know they're really strong beers so it's on you know you're talking six and a half to seven percent beyond so this is just tasting like a very timid beer like a ta this just tastes like a table beer to me well but you know it's um, it is 4% beer, so it's not that strong, but it tastes very, um, very biscuity, incredibly sweet. It's too sweet, actually, for what it is. It just tastes like a very sweet barley tea. It's got, like, sort of a strange tannic thing going on the back as well. Um, it's a little bit bitter, and it's quite dry. But, yeah, it's going to have the very, very sort of base ingredients to making the beer, to be honest. You know, again, the, these companies, they're not going to spend a lot of money on hops and speciality malts to go into their beers they're just brewing beer for the sake of the masses that go to the pubs and and that's pretty much it but yeah i can't really taste a massive hop character to it the only smidgen of like um hops i can take away from that is it like a slightly citrusy edge to it but it's very minimal um, not much going on with it to be honest yeah it's 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 that weird metallic thing as well um, at the back of the throat it just it tastes artificial completely artificial that's pretty much it there's not really much to to say else about it really you know but yeah thank you for the uh, request uh, Daniel Bowen I do take these um, reviews seriously as well so I'm glad you've given me a request to review Carling and be as critical as possible uh, at the same time as that you take my reviews seriously to ask me to um, review Carlin. You know, goes both ways really. Yeah, time for the scoring. So the score, I'm gonna give this beer. I couldn't even give it a one. On the untapped rating system that I tend to use, uh, it goes between zero and five. And I've always said if I, if I do find a beer which is absolutely amazing, I, I will never give it a five because there's no such thing as a perfect beer. There's like there's so many styles and variations out there. There's no such thing as a as a five out of five beer. And I think the same goes again for there's there's no such thing as a, as a beer which you can't sort of give some form of rating to it. You know, I think the 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 rating I'm going to give it, or the score I'm going to give it, a 0.25 out of 5. It's worth a quarter, um, quarter of a, of a mark, just because it's wet um, and a little bit cold. But that's it. It's so strange. That metallic thing is so strange. Like, ugh. To be honest, if you drink this in a pub, you have absolutely no sense of taste. Um, your taste buds are completely shot. Yeah, unless, you know, you, you just want to drink this just so that you can 
drive home after five five pints of this, you know. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that, by the way. But yeah, it's not uh, it's not the greatest. Uh, I try to do as much of a constructive sort of review on it, I think. But apart from that, it's it's yeah, it's not the best. So thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, there won't be too many of these type ones, but. You never know, we'll see. And as always, I'll see you very soon. Yechida.